In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the way one of the Gospels of the New Testament, which revealed the Word of God to the world, starts. By the 10th century, it reached the far north of Russia, where the vast tribe, the ancestors of the modern Veps, lived, making them the first Fino Ugric group of people that converted to Christianity. It is believed that the first Orthodox churches were built in the Vepsian land in place of the pagan temples or near sacred groves. The role of the Tree of Life was transferred to the life-giving cross. Christianity gently and organically drove out the pagan religion. A belief in one God was uniquely interpreted by the Veps in their own language. Monks visited nearby villages to proclaim the gospel. Of course, they spoke in the Veps language, Vepsian. There was no other language as widely spoken in the area as the Vepsian language at the time. During Soviet times, the language was banned and many churches were destroyed. Shortly, they forgot not only the word of God, but also the words of their ancestors. The revival of the forgotten culture started only a few years ago when Vepsian manifested itself again on the ruins of the Jonah Yashazirsky Monastery, the main Orthodox monastery of the Vepsian region. Many biblical texts had to be revisited because it turned out to be very challenging to translate a word into the language of the heart. Good day, dear radio listeners. In studio today is journalist Larissa Smolina. I am assisted by the sound director, Larissa Hatchova. You are listening to the radio Native Coast. Larissa Smolina is the author of the only program which is broadcast on the radio in Karelia, in Vepsian, a language which in 2009 was listed by UNESCO among the languages on the brink of extinction. Who understands our language these days? You and I? And some granny? Today our language is very different from the way it used to be. This record was made during the expedition around the Vepsian area, within the framework of a long-term program for the conservation and development of the dying Vepsian language. Conversational among young people and literary and written among the elderly. There are differences between the literary and spoken languages of Vepsian, but that doesn't prevent us from understanding each other. The target audience of this radio program does not exceed 3,613 people. That's the total number of people who can speak and understand Larissa Smolina. Unfortunately, most VAPs who live in Petrozavodsk, the capital of the Republic of Karelia, will most likely not tune in to the Radnoi Berig program for a simple reason. They broke away from their roots a long time ago. In the past, the lands of the Veps spread from the Ladoga and the White Lake to the Anega Lake. This territory was called Mejozeria. Over time, the Veps divided into the southern group with the main settlements of Radagosh and Vuelata and the northern group, which is referred to as the Prionyersk Veps today. They had settled on the banks of the Anega Lake long before Petrozavodsk was founded. The villages of Gimreka, Kaskes Ruche, Ribreka, Sheltozra and Shaksha were founded in the 14th century. In 1994, they formed a new sub-area of Russia, Veps, Volist. Only the village of Gimreka did not join the newly formed community. It was included in the Leningrad region. Gimreka village is one of the most picturesque Vepsian settlements in Prianezhia. 
This is primarily due to the cemetery that is located on top of the hill with the Church of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin. Today, this is the only monument of wooden architecture which has survived. The cemetery was built in the 17th century and it was the center of the Gimoresk Vepsian community. There was a parish and a cemetery. For the past few years, Yuri Sevastyanov and Anatoly Lisitsyn have been meeting here once a year on the eve of the Transfiguration, although the reason for their meeting is not joyful. Good day. Yuri, I can't believe you made it. How are you? I'm well. So am I. I came here to visit the grave. Yes, it's been two years since our friend died. But he's buried in a beautiful place, right next to the church. In the past, only the priests had a chance to be buried in a place like that. It's a big holiday tomorrow. I want to go to the Jonah Yashazersky Monastery. I don't think I'll make it. I'll go tomorrow. That's the way the elderly converse about life and death by the graves of their ancestors. They used to meet at christenings and name days, but now the reason to meet is to commemorate those who passed away. To chat, to stay silent, to eat kalitka, traditional ritual pastry, and to remember those who are not there anymore. In the last few years, many villages were abandoned. The village is decaying. Primarily, it happens because the people are leaving. Even the elderly live here only in summer and escape the towns in winter. Life has changed. The village has changed. It eliminated the opportunities for people to survive there. We get lost in a big city. We are a small group. And to speak our native language, we have to get together in the pagan club. The Pagan Club is in Petrozavodsk in the National Cultural Center. It is a Vepsian club where the young and the elderly get together to speak their language. <laughs> Larisa Smolina meets her teacher of Vepsian here, Nina Zaitseva. This time, they meet to talk about a business trip to the Veps Volist. And now I'm going to Gornoe Sheldozra, Iribreka, to meet with the locals, the older generation, and to teach them how to read. I want to take the Bible with me because this book was only recently released. What do you think? What should I emphasize and point out to them? I think, first of all, you should convince them that it's necessary to read. We are used to listening to the word, but it's good to get in the habit of reading. Let them read with their heart, not only with their eyes and mind, but with their heart, because it's their native language. This is very important. Nina Zaitseva translates biblical texts into Vepsian. Essentially, she is a person who today reintroduces the Bible to the Veps. They shouldn't be concerned if they see an unfamiliar word. Here, from the 393rd page, the dictionary of the Vepsian starts, which includes all the unfamiliar terms. I think they might not be familiar with the words like Pharisee or Ijant. Everyone knows that Ijant means a head of the house. So who could be a Ijant in this context, can you guess? Medsant Ijant, Gedan Ijant, Kodbi Ijant. Yes, it always means the same, a head, a leader of something. Ijant in the house, in life, someone who gave us life according to the Bible, that is God. We have two words to denote God, Ijant, Isun. And Yumal. That makes three words, actually. So it'd be more correct to translate Ijant as the Lord. Pay attention to this word so that they can learn it. And... Larissa has a daunting task ahead. She has to find out how the elderly perceive the biblical text. What difficulty do they face when reading it? The elder generations of the Veps are truly religious, but unlike their ancestors, they can't read the Word of God in their native language. Anatoly Lisitsyn honors all the church holidays. 
The forthcoming Day of Transfiguration is one of the biggest and favorite holidays. It is also called Savior of the Apple Feast Day because it coincides with the start of the apple harvesting season. This year is no exception. Larissa came to see an old friend that she used to meet in the Pagan Club on the eve of the big holiday. Now they are meeting on the authentic Veps land where the past comes alive. Come on in, come on in, sit down at the table. Can I sit here? So what brings you here? I brought you a New Testament. It was recently published. We already conducted a few cultural arousal operations in different villages where Veps live. We went to Rebreka, Drugayareka, Shoshka. Were you there? I don't have that book. You don't? Then I'll give it to you. Great. Happy holiday to you. What did you say? I can't hear well. Happy Transfiguration Day. I know, I know. Thank you. Are you going there tomorrow? Yes, I am, I am. Can you write in Vepsian? I can, a little. Can you read it? Yes, I read a bit. That's how unobtrusively Larissa guides a respondent to the main purpose of her visit. I suggest that we read texts from this book. Can we find something suitable and try a short piece now? When we first started translating the Bible, we first had to address the specific terminology to see which terms are present in Vepsian. If there were words for to pray, church, holy man, and so on. And the key term is naturally the Lord. We had to coin a term in Vepsian, which would be recognizable and associated with this concept in people's mind that it had the meaning that everyone could understand and distinguish from the rest. The head of the house is Ijant. So Tivran Ijant is someone who is directing us from up above. It is the master who we address and we pray to. In Soviet times, the Bible was banned, and the Vepsian language as well. Gradually, people forgot the words of prayers. Churches fell into decay. Only a few people, essentially hermits, managed to retain some knowledge of the language. Yuri is one of the last residents of the Sheltozada village. His home is more than a plot of land with a building on it. I think this house is about 200 years old, maybe more. My grandfather and my great-grandfather lived here. As far back as I can remember, this land has always belonged to us. We kept cattle, made hay. A few families lived here. They built big houses then, for future use. The Vepsian home is a different world which retained the attributes of the pre-Christian outlook. There are spirit masters of the house, talismans protecting the house. It is built according to certain rules, a stove, stove bench, seni. Everything is permeated with history here. The physical objects come alive here, connecting the past with the present. This tool is about 100 years old. I also inherited it from my ancestors. Its name can be translated as a bending tool because you always have to bend, stoop when you are using it. It's used in places where a regular tool can't reach because of its shape. Yuri is 82 years old, and that's hard to believe. He's using this tool with such ease. (laughs) 
This is where Larissa comes after she has paid a visit to Ribrica. She pursues the same goal here, teaching someone to read their native language from the heart to understand the new meaning of old words. Yuri, let's try and read together, shall we? Did you study English or German at school? Yes, English. Then you are familiar with the letters. A little bit. After a short conversation, Larissa asks her student to read a little paragraph to see if Yuri understands the biblical text. Let's start reading here. When the Pharisees were together, Jesus asked them, Militat. What do you think of the Messiah? Do you understand all the words? Mm -hmm. The New Testament was purposefully chosen for those lessons. Unlike a regular book, hundreds of years of history and culture of the Vepsian people are connected to this text. Its content is known almost by heart. That's why the Word of God in Vepsian can be read intuitively, following one's heart. The harmony of the biblical readings while having tea is supplemented by the icons in the corners of the house. Inspired by this atmosphere, Larissa couldn't help going beyond the scope of the biblical text. And soon, she starts an ethnographic tour around the house. Yuri is happy to tell her about the history of his ancestors. Better than any tour guide. It will suffice to mention the Vepsian stove and its flap with an emblem of the Alexandrovsky factory engraved on it. The most famous foundry which operated in Petrozavodsk in the days of Peter the Great. Rorik Lonen was one of the first people to tell the world about the disappearing Veps culture. He was also the first translator of the biblical text in Soviet times. He was translating those texts as a believer. There's a story about Jesus walking on the water of the Sea of Galilee, which he translated as Jesus Christ walking on the water of Onega Lake. I told him, Rurik, but this is not correct. And he answered, how do you know? He could have been anywhere. This childishly naive interpretation of the Word of God sprung from the fact that sacred biblical texts have been passed by the Veps by word of mouth for centuries. They felt the words, they could speak them, but they couldn't write them down. When the Soviets came, they gave the Veps the ability to write, but ironically, they took away their faith. The revival of the language miraculously coincided with the revival of the Orthodox religion in the Vepsian culture. It manifested itself in the emerging translations of the Bible, including the translation of the New Testament, which Larissa Smolina is trying to decipher these days. The ideal solution is to talk face to face with the local priest. The opportunity arrives the next day after the tea table reading. Larissa is meeting with the priest Dasafe at the ruins of an old monastery. Have you ever held a service in Vepsian? We hold services here. Part of the services is done in Vepsian in the courtyard of the monastery in Sheltozara. Is it a recent tradition or has it always been this way? This tradition is 14 years old. When I was sent over here by the eparch, his Grace told me that it would be desirable to consider the ethnic peculiarities of this area and to honor the local people and their culture. That's why upon receiving the blessing from the eparch, we proceeded with the translation of some parts of the service into Vepsian so that it, it felt more natural and familiar 
to those who attended the services here. It is believed that the monastery was founded by the first Vepsian person who was canonized, Jonah. It is not easy to revive the main shrine of these people. The day of transfiguration, patron saint's day. It is celebrated in the namesake church. It provides a rare opportunity not only to hear the Priyanesh native language, but also to see old friends. Anatoly Lisitsyn arrives a couple of hours after the start of the service. He brings a basket of apples from his garden. People believe that if you consecrate them on this day, you'll eat this blessed fruit in the other world. One has to wait until the end of the unique service to inquire how these people feel about it. This service brings together a few people of the very small Vepsian community. Anatoly has endured the entire ceremony to the very end, standing next to his new teacher of the Vepsian language. Good day, dear listeners. Larissa Smolina is in the studio. I'm assisted by the sound director, Larissa Hacheva. You are listening to Native Coast. Today, we are going to speak about the Jonah Yashizhersky Monastery. It is the second most important monastery at the Valam Monastery. It is listed as a monument of history and architecture of Karelia. Now the monastery is in a state of disrepair. Nonetheless, it can be restored. This hope lives in the heart of every person. Did you enjoy today's service? Did you think there were many parishioners present today? Yes, there were many people. I even counted them. There were 50 people. And I think it's a lot, because the monastery is not close to the village. It's hard to get here. Forty years ago, when I came here for the first time, there were only five of us. And now I see that there is... How do we call it? Hope. Yes, hope. And looking at the monastery, I believe, I hope that soon there'll be regular services here and more people will come to attend it. I'm positive they will. Despite the fact that the village resists progress, the way the city rejects the traditions of their ancestors, the descendants of the first Orthodox preachers among the fino ugric tribes are still looking for their own identity and their word. A small group of people, only three and a half thousand Vepsian people, are trying to overcome the challenges of translation and to restore and preserve the language of their ancestors by the shores of Lake Onega, where biblical and pagan stories merged together a long time ago and where, according to the legends told by the elderly, Jesus Christ walked on the lake's water and made the hunters and fishermen of this area believe in the word of God. <laughs> 